Hello, I'm West Carrollton Mayor Jeff Sander. On behalf of my 2017 City Council colleagues, including Deputy Mayor Rick Barnhart and Council Members Jim Bowers, Angie Fryman, Jim Folker, Pat Maris, and Jill Tomlin, I would like to start this annual report by offering gratitude to all the residents who have taken the time to get involved in our city during this past year. Whether you worked at a special event, volunteered on a board or committee, or assisted with paperwork at the Civic Center, your service is truly valued. I can't emphasize enough that a thriving community requires active civic engagement. In November 2017, our citizens elected three new council members, Leanne Nash, Harold Robinson, and Amanda Zenny, who began serving in January. I want to thank the council members who ended their terms last year for their dedicated service. They include Jim Bowers, who joined council in 2006, Jim Folker, who began in 2008, and Patrick Maris, who started serving in 2014. If you were new to the community, or perhaps just not involved in 2017, I hope that you might consider attending an upcoming neighborhood block party or special event this year. Or perhaps you might be interested in attending a city council meeting on the second and fourth Tuesday of each month. Our community civil servants have also been active, careful stewards of all of our tax dollars. You should also be aware that for the past decade, state elected leaders have made budget decisions that have significantly reduced local government revenue by approximately $1.1 million each year. Even though the city is currently operating at the same levels that it was in 2008, our employees have found ways to continue to offer the services you expect. All of the city's accomplishments are only possible with the hard work of our employees. I want to take a minute to recognize the retirement of several longtime employees, including Street and Refuse Superintendent Eric Bear, Maintenance Worker One Pat Frawley, Police Officer Ron Jensen, Account Analyst Pam Trent, Laboratory Supervisor Tim Tehan, and Utility Maintenance Supervisor Randy Smith. Successful union negotiations were completed in 2017 with the Police Sergeants Union, the Police Patrol Officers, and Detectives Unions, and the Independent Employees Association last year. All three unions negotiated a 2% wage increase, which was extended to all non-union employees as well. The city continues to seek new business partners to improve and increase our corporate tax base. An essential component for affording the services that our residents and business owners rely on. Economic development is without a doubt a local initiative. Here are some of the major changes that occurred in 2017. The city and Misumi USA Incorporated, parent company of Dayton Progress, worked together to facilitate the construction of a new state-of-the-art warehouse and logistics distribution facility, expected to begin in 2018. The new facility will be located on Dayton Progress's campus located at 500 Progress Drive, which is the city's largest employer. The city was awarded a $150,000 EDGE grant by Montgomery County Board of Commissioners to supplement the project's budget. The overall construction and build-out cost is estimated at $12 million. Misumi USA Incorporated estimates that they will employ 20 people at the new facility. More new construction that will be coming to the city in a few years is a new Kettering Health Network medical office. During the summer of 2017, the city worked with the Montgomery County Land Bank to demolish the former Sonny's Auto Spa building located at the intersection of Alex Bell Road and Dixie Drive. After the city acquired the former Carrollton Plaza and BDI Flack Warehouse building, another major demolition is expected to occur later this year. Ultimately, the city is working towards the redevelopment of the property in a way that will maximize the close proximity to Interstate 75's exit 47 and the Great Miami River. In May, the city welcomed the addition of the Wellness One Pharmacy to our community. The independent full-service pharmacy located at 2092 South Alex Road offers free delivery, has a pharmacist who will make house calls, and also offers prepackaged dated and timed dosages. 
Johnson Machine Tooling, a manufacturer of precision metal machine parts located on Infirmary Road in the western portion of the city, expanded their building footprint and employment base in 2017. With assistance of a Montgomery County Edge Economic Development Grant of $100,000, the business added an additional 8,000 square feet of manufacturing space, which allowed the company to increase its manufacturing capabilities. The company, owned by Tom Johnson, plans to add seven employees over the next three years. Last year, the city also undertook the renovation of a single-family home located at 416 Greenport Drive. The renovation, which was completed on April 2017, was sold on the first day that it was listed on the market. This home, that had previously been a blighting influence upon the neighborhood, set a new high sale price for home sales in the neighborhood. The city's code enforcement staff complemented other neighborhood stabilization efforts by proactive enforcement of property maintenance and zoning regulation, resolving 2,808 property maintenance and 667 zoning violations in 2017, all aiming at preventing negative impacts on neighborhood property values. The department also began the residential rental registration and education program last year, which involved inspections of the exterior of 359 rental properties. A total of 232 code violations were discovered and corrected. Of 928 rental properties in the city, only 44 remain unregistered. The city experienced a sharp upswing in permitting and construction activity in 2017. A total of 519 permits to alter commercial and industrial buildings were issued in 2017, representing a total construction cost of more than $7 million. Those numbers compare to 172 permits and $2.6 million in construction cost in 2016, a major increase from the last year. The Planning Commission's caseload also saw a marked increase in development applications from the prior year. Clearly, this trend is good news for the local economy. Other major initiatives by the Planning and Community Development Department in 2017 included obtaining a grant from Montgomery County Land Bank to hire a consultant to prepare a strategic plan for the area around the former Fraser alstrom paper mill properties, the Carrollton Center Commercial District, and the West Central Avenue Corridor. After gathering public input, the Planning Commission and consultant plan to present a redevelopment plan in early 2018. Obtaining community development block grant funding to complete several demolition projects, including two different car washes on Dixie Drive, as well as vacant and abandoned residential structures on Squire Street and West Pease Avenue. Five more residential structures are scheduled for demolition in 2018. The city service department also completed major infrastructure improvement projects in 2017. These projects include final construction on the Farmersville West Carrollton Road improvement project, preliminary design for the Elm Street Bridge replacement project, and the completion of the 2016 curb and sidewalk repair project, as well as the annual asphalt paving program. The department also provided the essential basic services that are often easy to take for granted, including high quality water and sewer services, prompt snow and ice removal, and seamless household trash collection. The street maintenance division sealed cracks and made repairs on several streets, maintained storm drainage ditches, repaired traffic control signs, operated the street sweeper, and completed the annual leaf pickup program. The Refuse Division collected approximately 4,200 tons of household debris during 2017. The recycling contractor removed nearly 375 tons of materials. In addition to normal refuse collections, crews collected bulk items, scrap metal and tires, old paint cans, used oil, and transported appliances during the quarterly large trash pickups provided at no extra cost to the residents. The Water and Wastewater Divisions performed daily monitoring and control of the treatment and pumping operations and immediate response to emergency situations. Sanitary sewers are cleaned on a three-year cleaning cycle 
to minimize sewer stoppages. To understand the magnitude of water treatment operations in our city, here are some basic statistics. The water treatment plant produced 396 million gallons of water. The concentrate pond treated 85 million gallons of wastewater from the softening process. The wastewater treatment plant treated 469 million gallons of wastewater. Last year, eight water main breaks were promptly repaired. Water mains are flushed and the service department and fire department work together to test fire hydrants to ensure proper functioning. The city's full service fire department is responsible for responding to and mitigating incidents involving fires, medical emergencies, hazardous materials, and rescue operations. All of this is accomplished by a staff of only seven full-time and 29 part-time firefighters. The fire department strives to be efficient, ensuring that every taxpayer dollar is used wisely. The department responded to 2,256 calls for service in 2017, of which 78% were EMS related. The responses included several significant motor vehicle collisions, which required the use of the rescue equipment to safely extricate the patients and keep others from being injured during the rescue. There were 29 structure fires that crews responded to in 2017, thankfully with no fatalities. The Fire Prevention Division task is to improve the lives of city residents by preventing fires and reducing the impact of fires that occur. To accomplish this, the division performs inspections of businesses and occupancies as mandated by state and local ordinances and investigates all major fires occurring in the city. The fire department offered new safety and education programs in 2017, including a junior firefighter event and movie night at Wilson Park Pool. Many firefighters are asked to help organize and participate in public education events throughout the year. As a result, the fire department provided more than 95 hours of public education in 2017. In October, the department continued the annual fire safety contest with elementary school-aged children. Approximately 120 students completed a home safety project in this year's partnership with the school district. Three students earned the program's final prize, breakfast with firefighters and a ride to school on a fire engine. The West Carrollton Fire Department is committed to its mission of dedicated professionals providing exceptional service to our community. The department asks each of us to get involved in reducing risk in our community. We can all make a difference by preparing our families prior to the occurrence of an emergency or disaster. By learning first aid and CPR, installing smoke detectors, and practicing exit drills in the home. During 2017, the West Carrollton Police Department responded to 9,378 calls for service and compiled 8,631 officer-initiated activities. Officers also completed more than 2,500 security and community relation checks, which involves walking into businesses and shopping areas through neighborhoods and schools and spending time with members of the community on a more personal level. By conducting these checks, the department is able to form more personal relationships with various members of our residential and business communities. Forming closer community relationships was the primary goal behind several other programs that the department hosted in 2017. The department hosted a 10-week Citizens Police Academy that offered two dozen citizens a behind-the-scenes look at department activities with hands-on lectures, training, and ride-alongs with officers. The department continued to take part in the Coffee with a Cop initiative, providing coffee, donuts, and conversation to the citizens of our community. The police department also facilitated a new program in 2017 called Pizza with the Police. This program, much like Coffee with a Cop, provides pizza and the chance for informal conversation aimed at attracting more family interaction with the officers. There were three successful Pizza with the Police events held in 2017. National Night Out continues to be another popular program for the police department. 
This event, held annually on the first Tuesday of August, is typically conducted at Wilson Park Pool, with games for the children, as well as food and other crime prevention activities. The department hosted two junior detective programs, one in the winter and another in the fall. Both of these events were held at the police department and developed by the Parks and Recreation Department to provide the opportunity for children under the age of 12 to find out what it might be like to be a detective or crime scene investigator. This program received a 2017 Ohio Parks and Recreation Association Award for Outstanding Programming. The city's Parks and Recreation Department, with help from several other groups, hosted several popular community events in 2017, including Community Pride Day, movie nights at the pool, doggy dive, family camp out, father-daughter dance, monster match, sniff a treat, rake rally, high school swim nights, gingerbread house decorating contest, and the holiday festival. One of the newest events in 2017 was the first annual mini triathlon at Wilson Park. More than 30 children participated in the running, biking, and swimming event. Last April, the city received its 28th consecutive Tree City Award, which requires the city to spend a minimum of $2 per resident each year on the care, maintenance, and installation of trees throughout the city. The Parks Department was awarded $14,232 grant by the Montgomery County Solid Waste District through its Recycling Incentive Grant Program. The money was used for the installation of new playground equipment at Harmon Park, replacing the 20-year-old equipment with new equipment made from recycled plastics geared to children age 3 to 7. Eight residents harvested a plot in the city's community garden located next to the Senior Center. That Senior Center facility is a popular location for parties, showers, and reunions, hosting 71 reservations in 2017. The park staff also coordinated 210 park shelter reservations during the year. The city aims to keep all residents informed about all aspects of city business through many different resources, including this annual report, as well as additional video programming on this government access channel, which is also available through the city's website at www.westcarrollton.org. All city council meetings, as well as the weekly focus talk shows, are broadcast and highlight local community news. The city's public relations office also issues regular news releases to the media and posts information on social media sites such as Facebook and Twitter. Four quarterly newsletters are mailed to residents each year. The city also posts announcements on the digital gateway sign on Dixie Avenue and the key ads billboards on Interstate 75. In conclusion, your local government aims to be transparent and provide many opportunities for you to stay informed and involved in your community. We hope our residents will continue to be active participants in our local democracy. Thank you for watching this year's annual report.